65 so that's still quite low 336 so that is a big difference i think the reason why plants are doing so well is because we're using welcome to a new video everybody hope you're doing well Today we're taking a look at the two months old no filter aquascape that I set up for my guppy babies. So I made this little nano tank in the beginning of January and it's now end of February. What date is it today? Ah, it's the 28th of February. So it's more like seven weeks, but by the time you guys will see this video, it'll probably be somewhere in the middle of March. So by then it's definitely two months old. Um, so I made this aquascape for my guppy baby. So there's a whole bunch of them in here. Uh, the one you see here in front, that's the oldest one. It's becoming quite big actually. I think it's um, male. I'm starting to see some, some dots and some colors. So these are baby antler guppies. Let me show you the parents. Here we have them. So I have a small group of these tiger antler guppies. And the males are absolutely stunning. They have these beautiful yellow sword tails. So I think I have five females and three males left. I used to have four males, but uh, unfortunately one jumped out. But yeah, ever since I got them, they, uh, <laughs> of course, they've been breeding you know, like rabbits. And I wanted to separate some babies just to, you know, get a bit of a bigger group. Because I don't really see these um, tiger antlers that often. So I wanted to have some more of them. So that's why I separated some babies. Uh, let's give these guys some food because I defrosted some frozen brine shrimp. Yeah, I think these, uh, these are some of the best looking guppies I've ever owned. It's been a long time actually since I had some guppies. I think last time was many, many years ago. But let's get back to the topic of today, the no filter aquarium. So this aquarium was set up without a filter, basically for a few reasons. Uh, first reason was on the left I have the no filter vase. This was kind of my first real attempt at something without a filter. And I was enjoying this one so much that I wanted to do something similar again uh, also because this aquarium is sitting on this shelf um, getting all the electricity wires all the way up to the top shelf is a bit of a hassle and it doesn't look very good it looks a bit, bit messy so the less um, the less wires we have the better basically so that's another reason why i wanted to go without a filter and basically all my aquariums that i have are quite high tech so the big shell has a lot of equipment this is CO2 injected. Those two tanks are CO2 injected. And all my other tanks are basically <laughs> CO2 injected as well. So I wanted something a bit more low maintenance. So that's why that's why we set up this aquarium without a filter. And I have to say it's doing really, really well. So the aquarium itself is a 30 centimeter optic wide rimless aquarium from the company called Strideways. And the aquarium as well as the light was sponsored. The light is a 30 centimeter twin star 30B. Um, so I really like this combination. The, the, the quality of the glass is really, really high. Uh, you, you don't even see the, the silicone on the edges. And the light is a, is a budget light, but man, it's growing plants like, like crazy in here. So yeah, really, really happy with this combination. Um, in terms of the plants, we have a carpet of Glossostigma. So this was a bit of an experiment. Um, normally Glossostigma is labeled as a difficult plant, um, but it seems to be doing quite well here without any CO2 and without uh, without a filter and here on the left side we have a mix of small crypt so we have the crypt parva and crypt Venditii compact and there's some halantium tunnelum red in between there as well the the stems are ludwigia super red uh, rotala orange juice and there's some microanthemum umbrosum in there as well then on the piece of wood we have a load of weeping moss and also two clumps of anubius nana petite and then towards the right side we have some Actually, switch here. On the right side, we have some hydrocotyl species Japan Mini, and I have also what is this plant again? I think it's called Limnophila species Vietnam, something like that. And then towards the back, we also have some Hygrophila pinatifidum. That's basically the only plant in here that's not really doing very well. And lastly, of course, my favorite, the redwood floaters Philanthes fluitans. So I think the reason why this is doing so well and why the plants are growing so fast, even though there is no CO2 in here, barely any liquid fertilizer, no filter. I think the reason why plants are doing so well is because we're using reverse osmosis water in here. 
So basically all my tanks that I have, I mean the shallow, the other tanks that are on the, uh, on the shelf here, all have just my regular tap water. But my tap water is quite hard. I think it has a KH of like 7, 8, GH 9 or 10, something like that. So it's quite hard. And from what I've experienced so far, it seems that the majority of plants just grow a lot better in softer water. Not all plants, but most of them. So I knew that with the Colossal Stigma carpet, I would have a lot better success if I would use RO water. So that's basically the reason why I chose it. I already had a small RO filter, so it was just, it was just an easy choice. And uh, to kind of give you an example, the difference between RO and tap water, I have a, a TDS meter here. So TDS stands for total dissolved solids. And you can basically just measure yeah, how many dissolved solids are in the water. So it's not really a very accurate way of measuring because yeah, solids can be everything. Um, but here on the back is a little explanation. So how pure is your water? So zero TDS is RODI water. Uh, 50 is carbon filtered water. So average tap water is between 100 and 300. And then everything above that is very um, mineral rich water basically. So to test, just switch it on, put it in the aquarium. So we are now at 65. So that is still quite low. The reason it's not zero is because in this aquarium I have some of these, um, what is called again, millennium stones. So these stones, these rocks, they actually release some calcium into the water. So that's why the, uh, the TDS is not completely zero. Normally, if you are using reverse osmosis water, you either have to add some minerals back to it, or in this case, because you have rocks that are already releasing some minerals, you don't really need it. So a TDS of 65 is actually still quite low, um, but that's just because I did a water change, I think two days ago, with pure RO water. And over the course of a week, the TDS will slowly increase to about 100 or 150. So then I'll do a, a water change again, and then we can yeah, just keep the water nice and soft. And it seems to be working quite well. So that was 65. So now let's check the, uh, the big shallow. Uh, clear. Here we go. 336. So yeah, that is a big difference. <laughs> So I'm really happy with the progress of this little tank. Uh, so what I want to do today is a little maintenance session. I want to trim some plants, especially the, uh, the moss and the Colossal Stigma carpet, give it a small trim as well. And we also actually have some algae, so we need to take care of that as well. And what else? Oh yeah, I want to replace the Hygrophila pinnatifida. That's the plant that isn't growing in here. I want to replace it with something else, but I'm not sure yet what. So I recently noticed that we have some algae issues in this small corner right here. So in between the, uh, the Limnophila and also on the leaves of the Pinatifida, we have some what looks like staghorn algae and some hair algae as well. So over there you might see it. See that it's already a bit um, pinkish because I treated it with some liquid carbon. And over here a bit more down low we have some yeah, sort of hair algae as well. So I think today we'll do another treatment with liquid carbon and then Hopefully we can get rid of it. I think, I'm not sure why the algae appeared. I think it has something to do with the, uh, with the baby guppies. I mean, there's quite a lot of them in there. You don't really see it right now because they're a bit hard to spot, but there's, I think there's about 20 of them in here or so. And I feed them every day, so they produce quite a bit of waste. So I think that's why we might have some algae issues. Okay, so I think we can get started with the trimming session. So like I said, I want to trim the moss. I mean, it looks quite good right now, but it's starting to uh, start to get it quite big. And the thing is with most, like it collects quite a bit of waste. So you don't really see it now, but whenever you do a water change and you direct some water onto the moss, like you get all this dirt, it all starts to well up, you know? So I don't want the moss to collect too much waste organics because then we're going to get algae. And also the, the, the closest stigma carpet, I want to trim it just to give it a nice, clean look. It looks really good right now, but it's sort of, yeah. It's on the point of becoming a bit overgrown. And then the stems in the background, that's it. So I just made a video about how I made a moss vacuum cleaner. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, I'll leave a link on the top of the screen. Definitely check that out. Uh, I would love to use this in this aquarium as well, but the aquarium is just too small for this. This moss vacuum cleaner is a bit too powerful. It's gonna blow all the baby guppies out of the tank. So we'll just have to go with the old traditional way of trimming moss. 
So I'm first going to remove the floating plants. I want to keep them separate so they don't mix up with our, uh, our plant trimmings that we're going to throw away later. Once we're done with the trimming session, we can add these floating plants back in. So these are the, the redwood floaters. Uh, scientific name is Philanthus fluitans. So these plants, in my opinion, they grow a lot better in water without much surface movement. So especially in these no filter tanks, they do really, really well. And if you want to get them like super red, for example, like I have in the, uh, in the vase, you basically just need strong light mixed with very low nitrates. So if you have high nitrates, these redwood floaters will never get really, really red. So bright light, low nitrates, that's the key to red redwood floaters. So I'm first going to trim the moss. And for that, I like to use this uh, so-called spring scissor. So this, is, in my opinion, works really well with moss. And of course, because this aquarium is very small, it also works really well in these tight spaces. Alright, the moss is trimmed. It's a bit tricky because this is a weeping moss and a weeping moss doesn't really attach properly to a hardscape. So here in the 70 liter scape, I think I've used java moss. And as you can see here, this piece for example, is completely attached to the spiderwood. It's literally growing on there. The weeping moss doesn't really do that. Like you can see right here, like it's completely loose. It's not even attached to the, to the wood itself. So that is a bit tricky when you want to trim it, but uh, it can work definitely. I think when we're doing the water change, when we're lowering the water level, I'll add a drop of super glue onto the wood and just kind of stick it on there. But yeah, that's the moss trimmed. So all the pieces of moss are now on the bottom here. So it's important that we get everything out. So I'll remove the big pieces with the pin set. And then later on when we're doing the water change, we'll siphon out everything else from the substrate. So that's the moss trimmed and removed. Now we're moving on to the carpet. And for that, I'm going to use the, the wave scissors. I think the wave scissors are literally the best for when you're trimming the carpet because you can get really down low without having to awkwardly move your, your hand. So wave scissors, um, this, they are quite big, so it's going to be interesting to see how well they're working well in this tight space, but I'm sure we can make it work. <laughs> Here we go, just a small light trimming session of the Glossostigma. Just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And then it will look good for a long period of time again. And next up is to remove all these floating trimmings from the surface. I've decided not to trim the stem plants today. I'll let them grow a little bit longer. And then we can trim them and replant them and we can immediately see the good result again. What I want to do is uh, remove the pinata fida. That's the, uh, the plant here in the middle, those few leaves. It hasn't grown at all since I planted it there basically. And the leaves are starting to attract some algae, so it just doesn't look good. So I want to remove it and replace it with something else. So I've been thinking and I think I came up with a nice uh, replacement. So in the aquarium below it, on the right corner you have Blixa japonica. So uh, one of my favorite plants. Um, I haven't really had a chance to, uh, to display it properly, but I think it looks really nice in this aquarium. And I bought this as an in vitro pot and actually had a few plants left over that I've added to the big shallow. So over there you can see a small sprig and there's some more in between the, the two rocks over there. So I think I'm going to remove that. I think there will be a nice solution for the, uh, the no filter nano. So the big shallow is actually looking quite good as well. And believe it or not, it has been running without CO2 for the past two weeks. So two weeks ago, I had to travel to Germany to download plants. And just the day before that, my CO2 bottle ran out. And uh, since then, I actually haven't refilled it. I just brought it to, uh, to refill this morning. So as you can see, if you don't believe me, <laughs> here's my CO2 regulator. And there's no bottle. So. No CO2 for the past uh, two weeks. I just reduced the light intensity to 35%. I think it was on 60%. So yeah, basically reduced it by half. And uh, yeah, it's doing just fine without CO2.
Alright, the peanut defeater removed and the Blixa Japonica added. So it's still very, very small, but it will grow, uh, it grow bigger. And then I think it will really fill up the space nicely. So the last thing I want to do on this maintenance session is kind of spot treat that algae with some, uh, some liquid CO2. So in here there's some staghorn and some hair algae. And I think we can, uh, we can just kill it with some liquid CO2. So I have a small little container. I want to add a little bit of Masterline Carbo and then I'm not, I don't want to dose it pure in this aquarium because it's such a small volume. It's just going to take a little bit of water, add that to here so it's a little bit diluted, maybe even a bit more. Give that a little mix. And then we'll spot the algae with this mix. So we'll just kind of let that sit for a little bit and then uh, we do a nice big water change and then we're good.